in Torrey, St Fittix Park is a wonderful green lung. There's literally nowhere else to go. We'd have to walk all the way over to uh, Duthy Park for mothers to give their children some, some greenness. We'd stand to lose an incredible amount if it is developed in order to help the Aberdeen Harbour become a 24-7 working harbour. When I first started walking there it was just rough grass with the burn running through it full of rubbish. We've had a combination of input from SEPA, from local residents and the council and have they've transformed this place, planting woodlands, creating these wetlands, landscaping. It has changed significantly in the time I've been here for the better for the local community and people using the space but also for wildlife and uh, there's ducks behind us but there are many many more species coming through the park. You see deer, people have seen otters, so many birds for wildlife and in fact this area is very important for migratory birds. It's just a fantastic wild space. St Fittix Park is under threat of industrial development. Now that would, that would be termed an energy transition zone. The idea is it is a flat space close to the harbour, can accommodate technologies, industry, lay down, transport, all related to renewable energy activities. People of Torrey have got no, absolutely no objection to the concept of an energy transition zone. We lost the Bay of Nick to the harbour, but they promised at the time that they would use the brownfield sites in Altons and Tullus for industrial support for the harbour and that mollified a lot of the local community who were against the harbour and there was even an agreement drawn up between the harbour board and Aberdeen City Council called the Mitigation and Compensation Agreement which in return for losing the bay they were going to enhance this with further plantings with classrooms, innovative ideas that would further enhance the value of the park. But that all seems to have changed with the concept of the energy transition zone. There are two local industrial estates, the Altons and Tullis, and there's no reason why they could not be used to form the energy transition zone. We feel that we've been let down, essentially. But more than that, the plans seem to be very speculative. If you compare the potential space with other areas being offered in Cromarty, Forthports and elsewhere for this kind of activity, they seem to be better adapted, better suited for that kind of activity. With more space, deep water offshore, better local infrastructure. And so we feel that even if the land was freed up, as the planning proposal suggests, we worry that it would be concreted over but nobody would use it because the business plan hasn't been properly thought through. I think it's important to remember that Aberdeen has a long and illustrious record of providing social housing all throughout the city and Tory is no exception. There's a lot of people living on the edges of St. Fittix Park, insofar as the park is called St. Fittix Community Park, the, the people who live in the housing here are the most immediate community that the park provides for. And none of the housing has uh, private garden space, so the park really represents a significant amenity for the people who live here. It's complicated and we've a long way to go, but we're arguing that if you're trying to mitigate against climate change, what you don't do is destroy somewhere that is already doing precisely that. Now, this is a carbon sink, it's a flood drainage area, it's a biodiversity wildlife site, and it's good for people's mental and physical health. And to throw all that away for an idea, although based on on perfectly sound principles might not even happen, we think would be criminal. The 
people of Tory feel hard done by. And it really started when the oil industry came to Aberdeen in the 70s and the old uh, fishing village of Tory on the south side of the Dee was requisitioned for oil use related to the harbour. At that time as well, when I look over here to my right, I can see the old Tullis dump, which is now cap. It used to have a cloud of seagulls over it, because all, this, all the city's rubbish came here, it was just dumped there, all mixed up, no such thing as recycling then. Thankfully that's been capped, but it's an example of the waste that has been brought here in the past. Instead now, we have a sewage works here, which is in 2000. It's a bit smelly at times, so we put it that way. And the latest um, is uh, an incinerator, which uh, again, just as we um, took all the rubbish for miles around, um, if the incinerator operates, it's going to take waste from all of Aberdeenshire, all of Murray and Aberdeen itself. It's, although it's technically in East Tullis, just over the railway line, it's only 500 yards from Tullis Primary School there and it's going to be burning 150,000 tonnes of rubbish a year. And not only that, it's going to be pumping out many, many thousands of tonnes of carbon dioxide and also nitrous oxide, which are contributing to climate heating. People had begun to feel that, ah, there's no point in raising your voice, it's going to happen anyway. But with this, I think it's different. I think people really believe in their power to raise their voice, insist that it's heard, and argue for what's right. In the absence of any private outdoor gardens for the people who live in this housing, the loss of the park would be catastrophic in terms of their quality of life. We feel that the initiative has now been taken not by the local authority looking after the community, but by the business community who claim that they're saving the planet. But it looks as though they're really just saving themselves and paying scant regard to the interests of the local community, the local environment and uh, the associated wildlife. And this is home.